In this video, we're going to start transforming the basic sine and cosine wave. For this video, we're going to focus on transforming the amplitude and adding a vertical shift. Let's start off again with the basic sine function. This is where we left off the last video. And I said that the general form for a sine function is going to be given as such. f of x is equal to a times sine of bx plus c plus d. Watch the parentheses. Some textbooks will have bx minus c. It really doesn't matter which form you use as long as you're consistent in using it. So let's start off by focusing on a. A is, as I said before, the amplitude of the function. And the amplitude, I said, was always positive. Just like the radius of a circle is always positive, the amplitude is always positive. So the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of whatever number we're multiplying by sine. Let's start off with this example, 2 times sine of x. Well, if I look at my first point that's at x is equal to 0, if I plug 0 into my function, f of 0 is equal to 2 times sine of 0, or 2 times 0, or 0. So that point doesn't change at all. Well, let's go to pi over 2. I think things will be a little bit more interesting here. f of pi over 2 is equal to 2 times sine pi over 2. And if we look, pi over 2, well, that looks like sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So this becomes 2 times 1 equals 2. So for sine of 2 times x, the point pi over 2 isn't equal to 1, it's now equal to the value 2. The next point we'll look at is pi. Again, the sine of pi is 0, so it shouldn't be a surprise that f of pi is also equal to 0, because anything times 0 is still 0. At 3 pi over 2, however, again, if we plug 3 pi over 2 into our function 2 times sine of x, I get 2 times sine of 3 pi over 2, and sine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1, so 2 times that is negative 2, so that point becomes negative 2. And the point at 2 pi, well that also is going to end up being 0. So if we connect those dots, we get something that looks like this. If f of x equals 2 sine x, our graph is expanded, or stretched, by 2. My amplitude is the absolute value of 2, or simply 2. Well, what happens if I look at 0 0.5 times sine of x? What do you expect to happen there? Well, my points that are 0 are quite frankly going to still be 0, because 0 times 0 0.5 is still 0. But we're going to have to look at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 again. Let's start off by pi over 2. If I plug pi over 2 into my function, I get 1 half times sine of pi over 2, and sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so the function is equal to 0 0.5 times 1, or 0 0.5. At 3 pi over 2, instead of negative 1, we're going to multiply negative 1 times 0 0.5 and get negative 0 0.5. Again, if I connect those dots, I see my graph of f of x equaling 0 0.5 sine x. Again, my amplitude is the absolute value of a, the number that I multiply my sine by, and that's just equal to 0 0.5. One last example. What if I have something like negative sine x? Well, 0 times negative 1, again, is still 0. So we won't worry about those points, we know those are still 0. Let's look at what happens at pi over 2. If I use pi over 2 in my function, then f of pi over 2 is equal to negative sine pi over 2. Pi over 2 is equal to 1. So if I negate that, I end up with negative 1 at pi over 2. At 3 pi over 2, the opposite happens. I have negative sine 3 pi over 2, which is equal to negative negative 1, or positive 1. Again, if I connect those dots, I end up reflecting my sine function over that x-axis. And again, my amplitude, remember, amplitude is always positive. So the absolute value of negative 1 is equal to 1. So the amplitude for this sine function is 1. Here's a summary of the different things we can do with a. The amplitude is either going to expand or contract our function vertically. If the absolute value of the amplitude is greater than 1, 
this graph is going to expand or be stretched vertically. If the absolute value of a is less than 1, it's going to contract or shrink. If a is less than 0, the graph gets reflected over the x-axis. And remember, the amplitude is always equal to the absolute value of a, that number that I multiply my sine by. All right, here we are back to our general sine function, and now we're going to focus on this plus d. What the plus d will do, well, let's see what it does. Let's look at the example sine of x plus 2. Notice that plus 2 is outside the parentheses. It's not an input to my sine function. Let's look at the point 0. f of 0 is equal to sine 0 plus 2. Let's see, sine of 0, I think that's equal to 0. So f of 0 is equal to 0 plus 2, or 2. So the value of my function, sine x plus 2, at 0 is 2. Let's look at pi over 2. At pi over 2, this function will equal sine of pi over 2 plus 2, or 1 plus 2, or 3. So there's my point at 3. At pi, well, sine of pi was also equal to 0, so 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. At f of 3 pi over 2, my function value is equal to sine of 3 pi over 2 plus 2, well, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so negative 1 plus 2 is equal to positive 1, and I have that graphed on my screen. Lastly, if we look at 2 pi, sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, and 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. And if I go ahead and connect those dots, I see my graph of sine of x plus 2. I'm not going to belabor the point anymore, I'm not going to go through step by step, but I don't think you'll be surprised to find out that sine x minus 2 shifts my function down to 2 units. Again, if I look at a summary of this, my d shifts vertically. My a expanded and contracted vertically, my d shifts vertically. It will shift up when d is greater than 0, and it shifts down when d is less than 0. And there we've talked about transforming the basic sine wave, and we've talked specifically about amplitude and vertical shift.